The following game review is based on a homebrew works by local YouTuber Billy Time. The games shown are not the final versions and have been frequently updated and tweaked for maximum player enjoyment. My review of these games is based on my experiences with the version that I had at the time. Please make sure you support the creator by going to BillyTime.com and downloading the latest versions of his video games. Enjoy. I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I'm an expert gamer. <laughs> no shit. I even got a certificate from PlayStation themselves proving it. No, seriously. Check it out. See? Here it is. On the wall. I wasn't lying. Look. It says, Tyler Harris, that's, that's me, is a member of the Gamer Advisory Panel. Acknowledged as an expert gamer, the owner of this certificate is helping to shape the future of gaming. I don't know where this came from or what I did to earn it, but let it go on record that when it comes to video gaming, I know my stuff. Kinda. So when I heard that a local content creator was making his own video game based off of his web show, I knew I had to check it out. These are the Billy Time games, and I'd like to talk to you about them. So here it is. This is Billy Time. Now while we're playing the game, you're definitely going to be able to tell which Super Nintendo game was used as this game's base. But what I need you to do is not to focus on what the game looks like, but to focus on what Billy Time is. Can you do that for me? Great. So without further ado, it's Billy Time. Okay, so right off the bat, you can probably tell what the source game was for this ROM hack. But hey now, you promised to focus on what Billy Time is. I'm holding you to it. So let's start up the game. No friends, we're best friends. Okay, so let's do a quick rundown on your moveset. You can run, you can jump, you know, the typical stuff in a game like this. But you can also wall jump, kind of like you could in Super Metroid, but not exactly that way because you can only really do it once. You have a super jump coming straight from Super Mario Bros. 2, and you have a double jump, which supposedly works at the very peak of your jump, but that's only if you consider your peak here instead of here. So there you go, video instruction manual. Actual first impressions? This is pretty good, especially considering that you need to master the new movement actions right off the bat. Hey, better now than later, right? And you know what? It doesn't look too bad. This music is really good level 1 music too. Overall, a ton of good decisions. I love that the not Koopas are wearing face masks. Like they're part of Team Skull from Pokemon or something. Yeah, at first I didn't get it, but looking over the sprites closely made me realize that they were indeed face masks. Or bandanas, I don't know. Again, not a bad first impression. Alright, just gonna maneuver around here a little bit. There's a box up there that I'm clearly too tall for, but I'm gonna go for it anyway. Check out these sweet ass moves and uh... Died on level one. Straight. Okay, so don't do that, I guess. It's at this moment that I feel like I should mention that I'm pretty sure this is Bill's first attempt at making anything like this, so there's bound to be a whole bunch of bugs. And for the sake of this review, I'm not really gonna hold the bugs negatively against him unless they're really bad. But, you know, like I said before, this game's been updated since, so it's likely that these aren't present. So whatever, we're going through the level, gathering 1-ups from the saddest looking bullet bills ever. Just looking at him makes me feel so sad, like, like there's nothing to look forward to. Still though, all the one-mans, you're super generous, bummed out Bill. Now get out of here, you're bringing the mood of the whole room down. Realist possible talk though, do not treat people with depression like that. It's not cool, man. All around the stages, you'll find these blocks that are notes from someone named Connor. Each one gives you a little paragraph to read, some with story, some with tips, and whether or not they're helpful to you. Well, honestly, it depends on how silly you're feeling. Like, if you're in a giggly state of mind, you might find the box that says, Reuben sandwiches are so delicious, I wish we had a secret Reuben level hilarious. But if you're being a bitter bummer like Bill was, then you might find these little text boxes a little irritating. Admittedly, I fell on both sides of the fence. So I decided to find out once and for all, how good are Reuben sandwiches? Let's find out. Whoa! Is this legal? Something about this line mystifies me though. I wish we had a secret Reuben level. Is this foreshadowing to a potential stage made out of sandwich? 
Okay, well, I'm going to spoil it a little bit here. I never actually ended up finding a stage made of sandwich, but I did talk with Bill, and he said that this game is littered with secrets. So is it possible that there's a Reuben level? I mean, sure. Anything's possible. It's a video game. I even found a secret immediately in the first stage. See, there's this little area over here where you can jump above the level which hides a block. Hitting the block gives you an- OH MY GOD, WHAT THE HELL ARE YOU?! This is Mike. He has an eating and a gym problem. He isn't really useful, but he eats stuff, so that's a plus. Uh huh? This is the person? Oh my god, what has science done?! There's a large variety in level theme, including the beach and a casino, which <coughs> clearly was ripped from another popular game. Other stages have taken place in the jungle, temple, and I'm sure many more. Each stage showcases some different ideas, and these so far have felt unique from each other. A good example being that there are two casino stages, one right after the other, but the second stage has you playing as... <laughs> you play as Mike. Look, I understand that it's a reskin of a favorite dinosaur, but come on, dude clearly has some back problems. Call this guy a chiropractor. This level wants you to collect five of the big coins to clear it which is an interesting switcheroo from the usual formula. It's not an easy level though. At least when you do clear it, you get the option to save your game. Yes, please. The thing about ROM hacks or homebrews like these is that most of the time, they're usually way too easy, way too hard, or they don't make any sense whatsoever. All things considered, Billy Time managed to find itself a nice little nook in the middle. It's just hard enough that you start to feel like the only way you're gonna get good at it is to play it to the point where it just beats down your will to live. It beats you, you get angry, you rage quit, then you come back later, and then it all makes sense. You have to let the game win every now and then. Or you could go slow. <laughs> like an amateur! <laughs> <clears throat> of course, of course playing slowly is a perfectly acceptable way to play. Practice makes progress. A lot of the jumps I'm making in this game feel really forced. Like, the type of force where you can start to hear your controller creak. Oh god, that poor SNES controller. Help me! I've been playing the same level for about an hour now, and I finally made it to the end. I can do this! Whoa, this boss is awesome! Get some! Get some! Yes! I beat the level! What? No! No! Oh my god, I beat the boss! I beat the boss! You saw it? You saw it, but it was robbed from me! Robbed, I tell you! My shirt's coming off. <laughs> Gee, game, thanks. Rub it in some more, why don't ya? Okay, so I think one of the coolest stages so far has been this space level. I don't know, i am just always been kind of a sucker for side-scrolling stages in space. Which is probably why I like Metroid so much now that I think about it. Something weird though is that the camera doesn't always move up with me. Kind of frustrating consider these little dongers here will launch me up into the sky. Uh, what? Uh-oh. I think I just broke the game. Uh, huh. Well. What? The file's gone? Come on, man. I had the option to save and I did. I really don't feel like going through all that again. All in all, this is a solid first attempt. I mean, the level design was questionable at times, and you can see his youth in game design and development, but it's still fun to play. Now, I'm not going to grade it on the number scale like I do the other games that I've reviewed, but is this worth it? Yes, absolutely. One of the greatest things you can do when watching another creative person develop and design their games is to see how far they've come. It's even better when you're the creative one and other people are watching you. So absolutely give this one a go. That said, let's pop the next game in because I really want to talk about this one. Okay, Super Billy time. Billy Super 2 time. Yeah. Well, goddamn. This game plays really well. For starters, the double jump can be executed at any point in the jump, which alone is a huge improvement. Each stage has a title card, which will bring you to a character select screen. Yes, he has different characters in this game. There's Bill, Kyle, Akeem, Mike. Damn, man, you're looking much better. Tony, who I have no idea who the hell that is, and Connor. Each character has something unique to them, which is fine, but in a side-scroller where movement is king, Billy and Kyle can double jump, 
but it doesn't seem like anyone else can. See, in order to maintain some form of balance, the characters that don't have double jump, their levels are tailored to their specific abilities, so it's not like a core ability is just taken away for the sake of taking it away. This also adds to each stage's playability, when you go in as a different character and the layout is different. The big problem with having all of these characters but only giving two the double jump is that you'll be attempting a level on a different character and naturally try to double jump, but end up just swan diving into the abyss. But then, and I'm not sure if I'm supposed to mention this, but Connor has the ability where if you press select, you can cycle through any power-up you want at any time. I'm sure this is a debug feature and it probably will not be in the public release. The story, once again, is a little... <sighs> well, it shows a unique interaction between the characters. Some characters just show up for no reason, others... <sighs> I'll just leave my criticisms at it's unique. It being unique is not a bad thing either, it's in a category where players will either love it or hate it. For example, Kyle calls out a weird video game cliche by saying that there has to be more use for these generic coins than buying Red Bull. No Kyle, there isn't. We see characters that seem to be sprinkled in just for the sake of having a wild random adventure. Like Kurt, Kyle's dad, who has a conversation about what they want to eat for dinner. Right. We also get to see legendary characters like Brian, the main villain, Bushwookie, known to be the strongest in the world, and John C- No, stop! This meme is not funny anymore, and besides, it's not a joke, he's right there! John fucking Cena is in the video game! He throws hammers at you. Mike eats him. Rest in peace. John C- ah! The stages, once again, are very interesting. Bill's ability to make stages coherent and unified in theme really shines, especially here. These aren't short stages, nor are they too easy or too difficult. Sometimes things feel a little unfair, like maybe sometimes I just want to grab a power-up, and a turtle out of nowhere just rams his shell right up my ass! We find ourselves running through the big city, a carnival with goddamn clown turtles. There's an arctic underwater level and many, many more. One thing that absolutely must be said is that Bill's choice for music, even though borrowed from other productions, is spot on. My favorite so far being the underwater level. So calm, so relaxing, so good. Now let's talk about the exact opposite of calm and relaxing. Episode three is Sleepless Steel. This creepypasta-themed stage has you running for your life from a creature called EXE. If you touch him or any of the stage's hazards, you get this eerie message that says, I am God, and then you die. You'd think I'd have a lot of complaints about this stage, but no. It's just incredibly difficult. <laughs> You could argue that this flying piece of shit is unfair, and maybe you'd be right, especially if you don't know the level. And even though it took way longer than it should have to beat, it's still possible. Just try to have patience. I tried with several characters, trying to make it through so many different ways, but I ended up going with Bill, because you can bring this P-switch to a secret door which takes you to the level's boss, in what seems to be the shortest amount of time possible. I am certain, beyond any shadow of doubt, that there are many other solutions to this level. Speaking of, I have insider information that tells me that this game is also littered with secrets. Some stages have various solutions, others have easter eggs, like the Bry Scraper level, where if you pick Dane, which by the way, who the hell is Dane? An extra pipe spawns at the beginning of the stage. So let's just, ugh, ugh, come on, get up there. Get up there. Okay, we're going in and, No, wait a minute. I'm gonna have to stop you right there. What? What in the holiest of hells is this? The Super Mega Butthole Puncher 10K? I'm guessing so. There's a bottle of lube here. It turns into a block. It's gone. I can't beat this guy, can I? <laughs> Whew, okay. Excuse me for saying, sir, but it's not really a secret if you have it so boldly labeled as such. Here we have a secondary character select room. He actually put in Mario and Sonic. One question I do have is why are the doors so far apart? Surely it'd be better to have them closer together? Why wouldn't we be Sonic? Oh my god, look at this walk cycle. <laughs> All the coins are rings now. That is such a nice touch. You gotta go fast.
Well, this shit got spooky real quick, didn't it? Sonic has a dark world that he can go to, which will actually turn him into EXE. I'm not really sure if this changes anything about the level besides its appearance, but man, Billy really put in a ton of ideas. His attention to detail to those ideas is fantastic. I honestly, I don't know how else to say it. As far as the secrets go though, I'm not gonna show them all to you, but know that there is plenty of replayability here. Not having the double jump is a little frustrating though, so let's force the EXE to close and we'll go back to the main character. Overall, this game has been a pretty enjoyable experience. Conquering the difficult levels leaves you feeling accomplished. Finding something new gets you feeling excited or giddy. Honestly, I'm really impressed with this game. But here we are, at the large double doors at the end of the Bry Scraper. I don't know if this is the end of the game, but these doors are screaming endgame to me. And after how hard it was to get here, I honestly am a little nervous about what could be hiding behind them. Let's find out. Uh, hello? Uh, don't tell me the game froze. Oh, I don't believe it. Bummer. The game froze on me. Well, that's fine. I've been needing to take a break for a little bit now anyway. I'll come back to this later. Something's been bothering me. Did this game save, like, at all? I don't know, maybe it auto-saves after every level? I, I guess, maybe? Does that seem right? I'm going with that, that's what I'm going with. It didn't! It didn't save! Ugh, damn it, now I gotta start all over. God, stupid. Yeah. Well, you get the idea. These games, for what they are, they're really, really fun. And I think it goes without saying that I much prefer the second game to the first. I don't know. I feel like the first game felt a little too experimental for my tastes, whereas the second game feels like it's Bill's pride and joy. It really shows. But the only way you can do the second game justice is if you play the first one. So here's what you do. Go to BillyTime.com, download both of the games, give them both a try, maybe give Bill a little feedback. Who knows? That feedback could help shape the future for Billy Time games. But either way, Support your local content creators, play fun video games, and just have a blast. Let's get back into it, huh? Ladies and gentlemen, BillyTime.com. We have everything related to Billy Time. We have the original Billy Time channel. We have Billy Time Live, our brand new Let's Play channel that we've been running since maybe November. Then we also have the multitude of games, Billy Time, Ultra Billy Time 2, Mini Game Island. Check that one out. That's a fun one. And we also have our storefront where we have different designs. Maybe about 20 or so. We have them on t-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs. Um, what, what's that? Bags. Yes, we have tote bags with our wonderful Billy Dime design logos. And hey, don't take my word for it. The shirt is absolutely amazing. Feels good. Feels great. So ladies and gentlemen, BillyTime.com, feel free, jump in, you, you won't be disappointed. <laughs>